we are Squawking Dead. I'm your host, David Cameo. I'm joined by LG Squawking D. Carol G. And Cosmo Mom 9 Rachel Burt. We're going to be doing a recap of things, just like more freeform of what our experiences were at, at, during Walker Stalker, what we were up to, who we spoke to, our little interactions, who we met, who we interviewed. Hopefully this is not going to be a crazy long episode. We always say that. <laughs> and we disappoint ourselves every single time <laughs> for your enjoyment. Uh, so yeah, I, I don't know where this is going to go, and I guess we'll see what happens. Uh, the one thing I want to do, the one bit of housekeeping I want to do before we continue is, if you're watching this right now, you already know that we've set up our coffee.com account. That's ko-fi.com slash squawking dead. Uh, there is a button on our website, squawkingdead.com. It's just under the main menu. Uh, it says support our podcast with a little coffee cup and a heart on it. Yeah, so when you click that, um, that's going to be the system in which we're going to use to distribute the show links. So when we record again, uh, those of you who contribute monthly, and it's really just bu- like buying us a coffee every month. Like you're sitting down with a friend uh, every month to catch up. And it's uh, $3 a month. And what you get so far is to be a part of the of this. While we're recording, you get to be a part of the exclusive chat. Uh, in the future, we want to start, you know, randomly bringing people on the show and then kicking them off mercilessly. Uh, <laughs> like, if you say something obscure, I'll be like, hold, hold on a second. Rachel, hold on, Carol. Let me bring them on the show because they paid for it. And they <laughs> help support the show. Um, and then, yeah, then, then you pop up on the screen, you know, with your headphones and microphone ready, and then you get to talk to us. And then obviously we'll snip it out if you keep fucking up and keep screwing up. Why is your mic working, huh? Why the f- is your mic not working, huh? Cut! <laughs> You're off the show! Adventures in production. Right, but, and keep paying us money every month. <laughs> so, this is how we treat you. Um, no more, no less. So, yeah, so that's that's kind of the plan so far. Um, we're we're going to perfect the whole bringing people on the show thing, but and I don't know how often we're going to use it, but it's we'll do like some test pilots maybe in the mid-season f- um, break, and we'll see what happens on that front. But yeah, uh, again, squawkingdead.com, click the little orange button that says support this podcast, uh, or just head to ko-fi.com slash squawkingdead and... Uh, start that stuff up. Do it. I, I kind of want to know when did you guys get in? Um, I, well, you got in on Friday, Carol, but you, uh, but Rachel, you got in earlier, right? Thursday. Yeah, I got in uh, Thursday morning. Oh, also okay. Well, what was your what was your travel experience like? <laughs> Honestly, it was pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> I flew out through a smaller uh, airport this time, so everything, the whole process was a lot faster, and I got to my gate like way on time, early even. And uh, there was actually a girl sitting in the. Uh, at the gate and I was looking around because I hadn't, I hadn't gotten my seat yet. Uh, when I checked in, it said that I would get my seat assignment like at the, at the gate. The, yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, this is weird. Like I should know where I'm sitting. So I'm like kind of looking around, like looking lost. And and this girl sitting there comes over and she's like, Hey, um, are you going to Walker Stalker? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I am. She's like, me too. And like, I was like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. So I actually had, a, I actually made a friend right there in the airport before I, everything even began. I, I had already awesome. met family. Yeah. <laughs> and funny enough, we were on the same flight home. <laughs> Get out. Funny. Yeah. We, and both times we sat like one row away from each other. <laughs> did you keep, did, yeah, did you keep in touch while you were there? Yeah. Yeah. I saw oh. her a few times. Actually, I, I introduced you to, to her. <laughs> Oh, which one? Which one is she? I call her. I call her my plane buddy. She, her and her and her friend were. She was dressed as prisoner Daryl. Gotcha. I instantly yeah. remember who yep. they are. Yeah. And then yep. they did they switch or I forgot what you, yeah. what you were telling they them. They did that. a few. She did a few. They did a few different cosplays. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd have okay. to go back through all the pictures, but I know they brought a few costumes. I remember at the time you were telling them, "Oh, you guys should switch. Like you should be Daryl and you should be Negan." Did, didn't you say something like that to them? I don't think so. Oh, okay. Why? I thought you said why? something why? to that effect. <laughs> why? why? I don't know. You're weird. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I am weird. <laughs> meanwhile, it's my it brain. Like to say. I don't know. I don't remember saying that. Mm. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Like, and they seem pretty young too, right? Uh, yeah, she seemed pretty young. Yeah, younger than me anyway. I, I'm mm. not sure how old. Mm. I don't ask those. I don't like to ask those kind of questions. <laughs> now, unless it comes up, I never ask. Yeah. yeah. Leslie looks super, super young and shouldn't be at certain parties, but we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that. 
<laughs> it's like playing the hot cold game. Like, are you uh, are you old enough to to drive a yeah. to rent a car? Okay, oh maybe my not. God, yeah. Have you finished high school? Not okay. even old enough to rent a car. Jesus, did you <laughs> drop not. out of college? <laughs> <laughs> Love the hot and cold game. Am I warmer? Okay. Right. But then you helped me out a lot when I got once I got to Atlanta, Dave, because I was literally planning on just hanging out in the airport. I for, saw the messages however, back and forth. Yeah. You were just going to hang out at the long. airport. That's yeah. silly. Yep. Yeah. Well, I couldn't. I couldn't technically check into my Airbnb until three p.m. and I got there at eight a.m. Oh. So it was it was going to be a weird day. Yeah. But what did I luckily, do? You told me about the Marta. I got on the train. Oh, so you just went right away. But where did you I, go? Yeah. Uh, Meg came pick me up, and then we uh, went and uh, toured Atlanta for a little while. Got uh, to Atlanta see or some... Sonoy? Or uh, Sonoy, sorry. No, yeah. we headed right to Sonoy, yeah. yeah. Well, um, my so look, my event was uneventful that day. I mean, literally working, but, uh, and to be perfectly really honest, I don't remember what happened afterwards. <laughs> <There's> <laughs> oh, more. yeah. I, I remember now, this is like what happens, because I mean, you're in Sonoy with, with Meg touring around, mm-hmm. and we should talk about that in a sec, but I, meanwhile, I'm stepping out, I'm getting a, I'm getting a lift to Sonoy, because I thought the shuttle that, that Camp Merrimack had um, set up was from Atlanta to Sonoy, no, it's from Sonoy oh, no. to Atlanta <laughs> at five. Oh. Yeah. I did this in the middle of the night, I did it, and right away I'm like, oh, I done made a mistake. I, d- I done made a bobo, um, and Uh-oh. I literally had to email them. I'm like, oh, I'm such a dipshit. It's like 2 a.m. <laughs> like, I'm so sorry. I thought it was like, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Then they, they refunded me right from the morning, like once, right when they got in. And it was just, then, I mean, now I'm stuck with like having to pay like a 60, it was definitely more than 60, uh, lift ride, $60 lift ride. Oh my gosh. So, but thankfully Meg, uh, Meg got my back on the way back so it's really really nice of her that's good uh, and when did you get to Sonoy? Uh, oh my gosh I dude I probably am not gonna tell you be able to tell you what time anything was this weekend <laughs> I was not paying attention to time whatsoever because I didn't have to that's one of my yeah. favorite things about being on vacation mm. is I never know. knowing what time it is and I, I, I it, there's, there's like a freedom to that and I had no mm-hmm. idea what time it was ever and i loved it sounds so, good sounds it was fun daytime i can tell you that much <laughs> the sun it was daytime when we got there yeah oh god that's the thing well, we went to yeah, yeah i don't remember i don't remember what order i don't remember what order we did things i know we went to sonoy first we went to uh woodbury shop we went uh uh i don't think we went downstairs to to chris's place um mm-hmm. i well, think did, it was pretty much woodbury shop yeah yeah i thought you might oh well, did you did you try to go to your Airbnb later on to check in, or or you just like waited I, till the I end? Did, oh. No, I did eventually. So we um, we hit a couple of spots. We went and saw um, the bridge that overlooks. Yes, uh, I saw the photo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we went there first. Um, well, what, and no, then we explain went... the whole thing though. The bridge that overlooks oh. what? Because yeah, not everybody else knows. Oh, true. Okay. <laughs> oh, it, it overlooks um, Atlanta, like okay. the in there the in the opening. Yeah, from season one when Rick's on the horse and he's shows the two <laughs> lanes. <laughs> shows the yeah. two <laughs> lanes of traffic <laughs> and Rick on the horse going into Atlanta and yeah, yeah. So we yeah. were on that bridge and we got a, a shot of the skyline and it was really awesome. Did you do the postcard um, thing? Mm-hmm. The, no, the, you I know, didn't you have, take, we didn't have one. Yeah, okay. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Hold the picture. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've Compared seen those, the and they're pretty cool. Yeah. They're pretty cool when they when they line up just right. I think we went to the CDC after that for, you know, where what the CDC was. What was we couldn't Al- get real t- close there. It was a, mm. uh, oh, I read the sign like a hundred times. I can't remember what it is, what it actually is, but it was the building that they used as the CDC. Right. Right. We, we couldn't get too close, so we just we snapped a few pictures from afar, you know, so you could recognize what it is. These are all on my Instagram too, by the way. So. Right, um, uh, which is Cosmo and then after that, Cosmo which, Mom Zero Nine. By the way, Cosmo Mom Zero Nine now everywhere: uh, Instagram, right. Facebook, and um, Twitter <laughs> as well. Nice. I did a thing. She did a thing. <laughs> I did. I was pretty proud of myself. Yeah. I don't do those kinds of things. <laughs> I don't In do between- it. <laughs> I don't. In between the CDC and Rick's Hospital is when I checked into the uh, B&B. Okay. I <laughs> yeah, <laughs> At some I, point. We went, to, we went to the hospital, too. The the back door, the back of the hospital that Rick stumbles out, and he's going down the stairs, and all the bodies are there and everything. We went there and snapped some pictures, too. It was um pretty shady-looking place, so we didn't stay too long. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> and, uh, not to mention a, a tour bus pulled up and they were like on the other side of this big brick wall and nobody got out. Like they didn't come down there to like get a closer look. And Meg and I were like, maybe we're not supposed to be. Here. <laughs> so we hightailed it pretty fast out of there. <laughs> so that, that's what you meant by that. Cause when you told me the story the first time, I kind of was like, I mean, I guess it was like abandoned. Was it a crack yeah. house? What is it? The government property? Uh, yeah. Exactly. I don't know. But I, I figured it. All of the above, yeah. yeah but above. I figured if a, if a tour bus isn't going to pile out and come down and take a closer look, then they're probably not allowed to. So, I don't know. We got out of there. Then I checked in. Okay. Then yeah. we headed to Camp Merrimack. So this is what I want to know, because they had so many activities throughout the day, like uh, photo ops and signings and stuff like that, and selfies and what whatever it was, that yeah, and which I didn't know about when I booked my flight. <laughs> Um, and I was like, oh, I'll work all day, and then I'll just come over at 5 when it was called for, when Merrimack Fall right, Bash was right. called for. And meanwhile, it's like, oh, no, we've got all this other stuff before 5. Whoa. And then so I'm like, okay, well, thanks for FOMOing my ass. So did, did you do any of that is what my question is. No. So you, you I didn't, came we didn't know five? about it until we got there. Yep. Mm. Yeah, we showed up a little bit before five, and that's when we found out about all the other stuff. We were like, oh. I see. Okay. <laughs> Meg got into high gear um, trying to do her press thing. Well, we should probably talk about... Ooh. Yeah, we should talk about, like, just that briefly. That was awesome. Yeah. Because she, she got her tripod out. She got her cameras out and stuff like that. But she was mentioning something about, like, how... Like there was just there was more than one person handling press and stuff. It was like maybe two other people. Um. Well, Lance was there. He was right. he was taking shots all over the place. And then and then another guy. I didn't catch his name or don't remember it. But um. Yeah, he was also there to. I, I don't know if I don't know if I would call him press, but just kind of cover the event, like right. get like, shots and you know. I think Oscar wanted to put like a nice video together and and have you know a bunch of different angles and just people hanging out and having fun. Right. Uh, I didn't Lance. see. I didn't see this other guy in interviews at all. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. 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 You saw some of the interviews, though, right? I think you were there for some. Oh, I I did all the interviews with Meg. Right. Yeah. Okay. But I didn't see the other guy with the not Lance, but the other the blonde oh, I guy. I didn't see him doing interviews. I, I missed that. Um. Okay. Yeah. Lance, by the way, is uh, Meloji Media on uh, Instagram. Yes. Just wanted to shout that out. And he's got a really cool series on PTSD too. Like, so you do, it's some of it's just Instagram mm -hmm. posts with extended captions, and some of it's um, full blown YouTube videos. So it's a pretty. You should definitely check those out. He will give you like an hour's worth of his time on video too, and he'll go through it, you know, extensively. And he's just in general though, the guy is a, just the sweetest sweetie pie that I've ever met in this fandom. He's literally salt of the earth awesomeness. Like, you wouldn't be able to tell, you, you know, he was suffering from PTSD. That's how good he is. No, no. He's a really, really nice guy. Yeah. Yeah. So, Carol, leading up to heading out to, to Georgia, you decided to fly this time, right? Or, I mean, you always fly. Yeah, it's just easier for me to fly. I took an early morning flight on Friday morning. My flight left Miami at, like, 640. So, I was, like, up by, like, 445 or something, you know, like, no, four, because I left my house at 445 to make right. sure I would get to the airport with enough time to get through security and all of that. But it was funny because I think I must have posted something when I was at the airport and Tom like noticed yeah. my post and he sent me a message and he's like, what are you doing? Like posting <laughs> stuff at this time. And I was like, because I'm in the same boat as you, because he was traveling also to the convention. And I was like, I'm on my way to like Quaker Stalker too. And he's like, oh, what time did your flight get in? I was like, well, it's supposed to get in around 8.40, 8.45. And his flight was getting in at around 8.20. So we just decided, oh, he was like, I'll just wait for you. And we'll like split a lift or whatever, you know? So That's like, awesome. yeah. yeah, it was really, really cool. And he waited because my flight was actually delayed. <laughs> mm. oh, no. yeah. Wait, hold on, hold on. Oh, let's, let's back this up. So yeah. first of all, Celtic TSO on Instagram. That's Thomas O'Mara. Yeah. That's who we're talking about. But hold on a second. This is what uh -huh. screws me up. Oh, a flight from from Miami to uh, <laughs> to to Atlanta is uh -huh. delayed. This is like yeah. a forty minute flight is delayed. It's like well, technically, technically, it's like two hours. It's Wait, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. Where, why? Do they... My flight was two hours. It, is, I don't this, know is this a Florida why? thing? Not to be that guy? But... No, but it could be. Like, my flight left at 640 and was scheduled to get in at, like, 840, 845. 
did, how many circles did they make before they <laughs> what well Which... it took us we didn't leave until like seven so it was 20 minutes delayed so instead of leaving at wow. 6 40 it left at mm. seven and then once we got in there was like we taxied for like a while before like we actually got to our gate so wow. basically it took some time like i probably didn't get out of like the plane for like you know until like after nine or something compared to like eight forty. But Tom was waiting at the baggage claim. We got our lift and headed straight to the convention center, and that's where I was for like the rest of. The- I didn't even go to my hotel. I didn't go to my hotel until like that night. And like mm-hmm. Eddie was the one who kind of gave me the heads up. He's like, "Hey, make sure that they don't like give away your room or anything." I was like, "Oh God, that would suck." So yeah, that never oh happens gosh. though. Yeah. yeah. So I just called them just to be sure, and they're like, "No, you're good." So I was like, Ooh. <laughs> they're like "What are you crazy?" <laughs> like we already like, made our money. <laughs> I was like, no, "Well, happy to keep it empty." Um, uh, but but yeah. yeah, I I just looked it up, <laughs> and literally, it is literally. It says typically it's in like an hour and fifty two minutes. Yeah. Uh, Delta being the fastest, taking fastest taking an hour and fifty one minutes. American yeah. being the slowest. An I'm hour telling and you. I'm telling you, two hours. How That's is- crazy. It took it took less than two hours for me to fly down there from Michigan. I don't know. I have no idea. I'm gonna blame it on the jet stream. Crazy. Now, mind you, I have no idea what that means. Maybe but- they fly all the way down to the to the to the very bottom of Florida and then all the way back up again. <laughs> <laughs> they have to, there's something, I don't even know, but that is hours. Crazy. And it's, it is nuts because really it only takes like an hour more for me to go from Miami to New York. Like when I go to New York, does it even, I feel like it takes I think it's like only less, half hour. I feel, yeah. I feel like it takes less than three hours. It's, it's two and a half hours. I know that I, uh, which is bleh. bizarre. Like how is that possible? I mean, our flights were the, were practically the same. I mean, I'm, I'm just, I'm looking it up right now. Cause I, like the distance between Atlanta and Miami beach it's like you're, yeah. you're down there. Mm-hmm. That's 664 miles. It's a nine hour, mm. according to Google Maps, is nine hour and a half trip by car. <laughs> Let's do New York. 862 miles. Actually, that's interesting. Huh. It's only it's only like 200 mi- more miles from New York, and that's the 12 hour and 57. But yeah, I don't know. So maybe I well. I don't it, know. I can't explain it, but I'm telling you. I guess we you. didn't understand how far it was. Wow. I guess, but that's driving though. No, I so, know. But yeah. flight wise, I can't explain to you why it's a two hour flight. Mm. Hmm. I wish I could, but I can't. So, but the important thing is. Oh, there's a poor thing, right? Sorry. I got there safe and sound. Yes. <laughs> yeah. yes. That was the important exactly. thing. There's so much danger going It was at- so. Oh, yeah. I love seeing you and Tom walking in together, too. You're like, <laughs> like hey, look who I found. Yeah, I'm like, hey, guys. <laughs> <laughs> it was pretty cute. It was, it was really cute. Funny. It was. It was cute. It's like, oh, hey. Walker. It's like, check it out. <laughs> With all your luggage. You had the little cute little scarf and everything. I know. I was <laughs> he prepared. Had his, he had his cute little jacket for his yeah. little piano. <laughs> I know. He was all polished and professional, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. It's a rare form <laughs> for him. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, no, he's a good dude. And I, he, like, he was certainly nervous. I'll say that. No, much. I mean, very, very nervous. But who wouldn't be? Like, oh, I mean, God. it's anybody would be nervous to kind of like say, I'm going to go on a stage and I'm going to moderate a panel with all these celebrities in front of all these people, you know, mm-hmm. like, and take questions. You don't know what kind of questions people are going to ask. Like, you know, you have to just sort of like go with it and just kind of like roll with mm-hmm. it, whatever the questions may be. And you have to kind of keep it going and you kind of have to ad lib to an extent and improv depending on like how things go, you know, yeah, your responses and, and, and be conscious of the time too, right. you know, all the while. Good segue because uh, if in case you missed it, <laughs> we did a panel with BMNY Deadcast Chris and Meg the Geek. Uh, several episodes back. That was episode 70, I believe. And uh, if you want the audio to that, the, the audio from that we got, that we retrieved from some of the footage that we shot, uh, I used to create an audio podcast. So feel free to tune into that. Let's dial it back and head back to Camp Merrimack because I do want to focus on that a little bit because one of my biggest problems was that, uh, again, working. And one of the shittiest things that happened before I left, my boss had saddled me with helping my brother. My brother works with me at the day job sometimes. Uh, So he does like on again, off again work. And he saddled me with my brother 
trying to set something up for a, cl- of a customer. So I was doing that from the moment I stepped out, uh, got in the Uber, or the sorry, the Lyft, and uh, I was driving all the way to Sonoy helping my brother out. And I was still on the phone with my brother when we got, when we were, when I was at Sonoy, at the, at the at Camp Merrimack. So it was kind of annoying. Um, and again, not to be negative or anything like that, or no, but it's but like, really hard to juggle that sort of thing, you know. And I, like, I was lucky, and and I kind of thought about doing the same thing that you did, which was like, you know, should I work remote so that I don't use the vacation day, you right. know, because I'm so frugal with my days, like I'm always like paranoid, like, well, you know. But then I was like, you know what, screw it. Especially because it's getting close to the end of the year. Like my days expire at the end of the year anyway. I can't carry them over, you know? So basically like use them or lose them. And I just didn't want to deal with, like if I could avoid dealing with like the phone calls and the messages and all of that, it's, I was like, I just didn't want to like deal with it. So I get it because if I would have worked, if I would have been working remotely, I probably would have been doing the same thing as you. Well, especially if your vacation days expire. I I just ran, I basically ran out. I mean, Mm. we don't really count vacation days, but you know that friend that counts how many times you've wronged them (sighs) in the back and they'll, they're more than happy. Yeah, I like I like this analogy because my boss takes things personally. Oh, God. So so it's like, but you took a vacation this day, this day, and that day, that day. Well, let me let me go back. Let me audit this. <laughs> okay, okay. Oh. Yeah, no, we're pretty we're pretty straightforward. Where it's like you get X number of vacation days, just as long as you don't go over. Like nobody really nobody really like says anything. I've never gotten any pushback, and I always try to give. I always try to put a disclaimer. I have this thing that I do, like before I take any major vacation. This was just a long weekend, so I didn't do it for this. But if I'm going on a long vacation, like I'm going to be away for multiple days, I put like maybe a week or a week and a half before I go away, I have a vacation email signature. Disclaimer? That's interesting. So basically, instead instead of it just saying like, you know, my signature with like your name, phone number, email, whatever, Above it, it says, like, please note, I will be out of the office from X day to X day. Please submit whatever crap you need to submit, like, before that. You know what I mean? Like, just so that nobody can be like, oh, my God, you're going on vacation? Because ah. <laughs> people get in, like, a crazy, frantic state thinking that the world is going to fall down because you're not there, which is not the case, obviously. But yeah. at least that way, it's like, I'm giving you ample warning. So speak now or forever hold your peace. That's you know? really smart. I should do that, actually. You should. Because that way, like, people know, like, nobody can say that they weren't warned. Yeah, I'm definitely in that kind of role where, where I'm at in my company. So that, that actually makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, okay. So, yeah, this kind of illustrates where my headspace is at when I finally hung up the phone for good and then started partying-ish. Because by the time I was all done, it was like 6.30, uh, things have been rolling. I was on the phone when I was saying hi to Rachel and saying hi to Meg and saying hi to Chris. I'm like, hey, sorry. Do the thing. It's on the phone. Sorry. <laughs> so, and then, yeah. And by the time I got off, it's, it was kind of like, okay. And now begins the cavalcade of people who've been meaning to talk to me and wait, waiting for me to put down the phone, which is great. This is the thing I've been waiting for. This yeah, is the thing really, I like going in. That's what you were really looking forward to. Like you were really looking forward to kind of like mingling and interacting and engaging. You're very good at engaging. Yeah, it's, I want to. I, I kind of want to say hi, tell people what new people. I, I like new people. I like to tell them what we do and I like to pick their brain because you, you really never know. Like some people like the moment you say, and this is, this is the pitch, right? Here's the pitch for new people. They walk by the table. They look back a little bit. And then I go, I go this, free shit. You want free shit? <laughs> I'm like that dude on the corner, like free shit, free shit, nod, nod. And literally almost every single time they come back, they like, yeah. literally come to the table. I've had maybe one or two out of like, I don't know how many people I've met over the weekend at Walker Stalker. Obviously, this is what we're talking about. But like the second you say that, like the second you say free shit, they just like, oh god, I've been spending so much money. Let's get some free things. Yeah, <laughs> treat me like a <laughs> VIP. Mm-hmm. Um, and so, and that literally, and I, I use that gag on them. It's like, well, you know, you've been spending so much money. Here's some free stuff. Um, yeah, and we were we gave out pins and but uh, pins and stickers. Uh, both the our little promotional sticker and the. We we printed out a whole bunch of the um, StabCon stickers too, like these little little like two inch mm-hmm. thumb sized StabCon stickers that everybody could wear at the uh, after party, which you know a lot of people took. 
I mean, I had one. I had one out of like six or seven packets of them. So it's really, it's really good. But going back to Camp Merrimack, it, 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 the downside of that is of, of, of like everybody hitting you up, people you know, also hitting you up, is that like literally, I don't know where to go. I'm literally, I've been you know, like, I mean, to, I've been meaning to speak to like, like Oscar or this or that person or this person. And it's like, I'm just being like, it's like turned this way and that way, which again, I cannot complain. I will not complain. I had the same problem at my 40th birthday party. We, my wife invited everybody, family, friends, etc., And it's just kind of like, you feel like you need the three hours just to say hi and talk to people and, and everybody and make people feel comfortable that don't know everybody, obviously. I didn't see that. But it was fun. And we got to hang out with whom I'm calling the Sunshine Twins. Um, Julie, uh, who is Rosita Dixon zero one on Instagram, and uh, Alexis, who is WD Addict, WD underscore Addict uh, underscore RG a best instead of obsessed. <laughs> we, we I keep meaning to tell her. I think you want to change that. I was like, Nah, I'm good. It's my brand now. <laughs> Spelling obsessed wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, they're they're great. They're awesome. I it, they're like the friends I the long lost friends from Brooklyn that I never had. You know, it's so funny. Like literally, they're they're wise asses. You know, just cracking jokes, uh, poking fun at people. It's great. It's awesome. Like sisters from another, another mister. <laughs> but what was your impression of Camp Merrimack, Rach? It was amazing. It was really nice. They had a very good flow to it. Um, there was a lot of people there, but I didn't feel overcrowded. Like. Right. I didn't I didn't feel claustrophobic, which can happen sometimes. But yeah, there was a ton of people there, but yeah, had a really nice flow to it. There were people lined up at all the tables, but I don't know. It was I don't know, something about it just worked. It was really, really good. And I got to meet a lot of people, talk to a lot of people, hug a lot of people. Did you <laughs> did you meet anybody that you'd never met well, I mean obviously probably a lot, but did you meet anybody in particular you want to give a shout out to? Um Oh my that, god, I mean been meeting everybody, to me? right? That yeah, I've been meaning to me. I mean, are you are you saying you? Do you want me to shout out you? <laughs> <laughs> now I do. So how what was what was it like meeting you me for the first time that night? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, um, talk about bad I mean, first impressions everybody. though i'm like rachel excuse me i got a phone call <laughs> right. i'm important I, You're I not. try to give him a hug and he gives me the brush off hold on a minute no, i did the drake thing <laughs> like, like, oh my god i did the, I did the two-handed like hello excuse me no uh, anyway. no like the no, it was really i mean i mean technically i i had i was meeting everybody for the first time meg did some uh interviews that i hope the uh sound turned out all right for well, what, what was it the was issue with the loud. sound because i remember that story but i think it's funny enough it was just it was people. loud well the jason kirkpatrick one specifically is hilarious because <laughs> we went out of our way to go inside jacob's table where it was quieter you know there was fewer people in there just people ordering food and then going back outside and there was this really nice um backdrop that that meg and chris and jason stood in front of and and I'm recording and everything, and and all of a sudden we get like a couple minutes into it, and like thirty people walk in, <laughs> and we're like, ah, uh, and like there's a this guy like right next to me, and I'm like, this dude's gonna bump me, this dude, and I'm and I'm holding the camera, right? Oh, you can't see me. I'm doing the hand gesture. I'm oh. I'm holding the camera, and I'm trying to like be so still, and I'm already nervous, right? And I'm like, don't shake, and then I'm looking around, and people are gonna bump into me. I'm like, what the heck? And, and so they're doing the interview and I can see on Chris's face, he's like getting super annoyed with the noise, but you know, we just keep going cause it's going really well. Like the conversation's going really, really well. And then all of a sudden Oscar comes, <laughs> Oscar right comes into and frame? he starts hollering. Oh well, no, no, he's out of frame, but you okay. can hear him and he's hollering at Chris. He's trying to get Chris's attention. And to be honest, I don't even know what for that. It didn't even get that. Far. It's like, Hey Chris, Chris. <laughs> yeah. Oscar's like, Chris, Chris. Chris. And Chris looks over and he does this. <laughs> you can probably see the phone doing one of these. Is, is it because it was, is like, Oscar? Is, sorry, is uh, is Chris doing the interview? No, right? Yes. Oh, yes, he is doing yeah, the interview. Chris okay. And Meg. Yeah. Well, Chris and clear. Meg are. Okay. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Chris and it's Meg okay. are are doing um, Jason Kirkpatrick's Trits interview. Yeah, and then Oscar comes in trying to get Chris's attention. Oh my! It was just hilarious. It was it was so funny. Do you imagine like my <laughs> wife walked into right now? Hey, Dave. 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 <laughs> 
day. You mean like the children in the background yeah. that are going, Mama? <laughs> Mama! <laughs> Similar, yeah. yes, yes. Well, now Mama. that you mentioned that, I don't have to edit them out, so it's fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's just acknowledge it. Let's just acknowledge it. Yeah. Just embrace it. Shouldn't they, yeah. shouldn't they be asleep? <laughs> judge, judge, judge. No, <laughs> it's Friday. We get to stay up. That's it's a right. thing. The weekend. We yeah. never yeah. got that. Yeah. I never yeah. got that as a well, kid. No. Oh, your parents were awful. Yeah, <laughs> it's true. No. <laughs> Friday truth. night, you get to stay up late. Yeah, well, I we get to stay did. up like an hour later. Me too. Oh, Maybe. Uh, no, I always stayed up. Like my, we all used to share a room. Like me and my brother and my sister, because we grew up in like a two bedroom apartment. And so, like, I remember like staying up. And we'd have like the TV on watching like, well, this was like the 90s. So it would be like either a headbangers ball with Ricky Rackman or like cable. Okay. I mean, it was very like, <laughs> I didn't have big, cable. It was very I didn't, basic. We didn't have cable. We didn't have cable either. It was, we, yeah. were, we, were watch, we were watching VHS tape. No, I'm kidding. We didn't have a TV in our room either. But no, as we, long as I was in my room, my mom, I could stay up really as late as I wanted, as long as I wasn't causing a ruckus. Exactly. Like, so we would like stay up like mm. in our room. Sometimes I'd yep. be like recording mixtapes off the radio. So oh, like, oh, I used to do doing that too. That. <laughs> Yes. Hey kids! Yes. In case you weren't didn't know, cassette tapes are what we use to record yes. music, yes. and you had to wait for the That's song right. to come on on the radio, which yes. is sort of a pre-internet right. stream. You had to kind of wait. Like, is it? it oh, shut yeah. up, shut up, don't talk! Don't talk to the exactly. DJ. Yeah, the yeah. DJ would always talk over the beginning of the song, and you're like, shut up! Shut up. <laughs> it's a feature, not a bug. You can- then you take a little piece of tape and you put it over over the two little holes in the top of your cassette tape so you can oh record over the ones you yes. don't like anymore. Oh my god! <laughs> these, no. kids, these kids don't hacks. know about that struggle. These only are only, Life only hacks. high quality cassettes in this house. Oh, oh, okay, for okay. our DJing, oh, okay. our cassette DJ <laughs> okay. over here. Uh, nice. The what was it? The Maxell ninety. Oh, those are fancy. Hi-fi. Those yeah, are fancy. do you remember that? Yes, I, I do. still have some. Really? I'm sure they're some all in unopened my ones. House. I'm sure I have oh, like dang. random tapes at my mom's house somewhere in the closet. They're there. Because I don't, imagine, why don't think we ever threw any of that stuff out? I mean, can you imagine like I paid, I probably paid so much money as a kid for that stuff. And it's like, <laughs> now it's like worth nothing. Probably. Maybe. Yeah. Like Who a knows? 10 pack for a dime. <laughs> At a, at a garage sale. It's almost an insult. <laughs> like, meanwhile, like a 10 pack uh, back then, it was like probably $20. It was expensive. Yeah. It was expensive. But for those yeah. cassettes, not the yeah. not the cheap, cheap no, cassettes. No, yeah. The Maxwell were like the high end like cassette brand. Didn't well, they have the commercial with the guy sitting in the chair and his hair is blown back or whatever? <laughs> By a yeah. very famous uh, advertising company, too, happens to be. I don't remember the name, but yeah. And and now you're thinking, wait, I haven't heard of Maxell and I where what are they doing now? now? Oh. 30 years. Hey, let's find out. Oh my god. <laughs> <Excel>. <laughs> <laughs> like, XL worldwide. Oh, I, I, the logo is still there. What do they do? Remember having to buy the uh, Polaroid cartridges? Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Jam in the front of your camera. <laughs> it just used to drive me crazy. Like even just wanting to get to the beginning of a song, it was like rewind, play it. Nope, not quite there yet. Play, it, yeah. rewind. <laughs> <laughs> well, later on, if you put spaces in your songs, you can get the special radios that would automatically get to the beginning of the track. Uh, you're fancy. Yeah. Oh, I was not. Well, the I car radios had them mostly. But yeah, uh, by the way, so Maxell does do really cheapo headphones, but they also do the um, the jellies. Uh, if, I don't know if you've ever seen them in like CVSs and whatnot. The jellies. Oh, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Those little earbuds. Earplugs. Yeah. Oh wow! How the how the mighty have fallen. Oof. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just looking at consumer. Okay, they do they do batteries. Okay, batteries are still useful. <laughs> they do CD disc media, so they do they do <laughs> they they sunk all their um, funds into and I've seen this into CDRs now. Looking at things now, I mean, I'm sure they rode that high for like ten years, maybe more. Yeah. But now, who uses CDRs anymore? No. Awkward DVDRs. I, I don't know what those. I don't know anything that you just said. <laughs> oh, I have like all these like you know DVDs, and I if I think is. about it, well, <laughs> you're like I know what that is. <laughs> I know what a DVD is. But the thing, I can't even use it on like if I travel for work and I have my work computer. There's no CD drive anymore. Yeah. Huh. Like they've like stopped using them, so it's sort of like I have all these DVDs, but for like PC. 
towers, right? Yeah. Is that to? Well, even laptops too. They don't. They they really don't come with them anymore. No, they don't come with them anymore. The laptop I'm on right now does not have a CD drive. Well, you have like yeah. a you have like a Chrome, the Chromebook. A Chromebook, yeah. Which yeah, no. I have, have an H- I have an HP for work, and it doesn't have like a, a CD drive either. The hell, it's it's like that much thinner though, <laughs> because of it. Do you, do you realize like all discs, compact discs are they're just like smaller vinyls. Yeah, Literally. they are. Yeah. With yeah, the needle yeah. being a laser, like a yeah, red light totally. laser. Yeah. Whoa, yeah, we've come so far. <laughs> I know. So weren't we covering something? <laughs> I know. We kind of went off on a slight tangent. <laughs> oh, from the noise in the interview. Ah, uh, maybe, oh, maybe. There we go. Maybe. Okay, there we I don't go. know. We'll go with that. We'll go, we'll with, go that. with that. That makes sense. Yeah. So I mean, Chris... Meg said that they were also like making like cappuccinos and stuff. Like that they That's were making some sort yeah. of like drink so it's like the machine was making all its the grinding the yes. beans yeah so <laughs> yes that happened too was that during jason's interview yes oh boy <laughs> all of that was during the interview yeah the whole thing lasted like i don't know six or eight minutes anyway and by the time the noise really got loud we were, they were wrapping up anyway so they just they were like you know thanks for your time and have fun. <laughs> yeah. And that's oh, about nice. all, how all of them were. Like, I don't think they went over, I don't think any of them went over 10 minutes. Oh, the interviews themselves? Yeah. 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 I feel like 10 minutes. I mean, you can, you can get through a lot in 10 minutes, honestly. Like, I mean, you can. 10 minutes is a long time to be asking somebody questions and responses. So it makes sense. Yeah. Compared to yeah. television. Well, I think that, I think the Nicotero one was about eight. Yeah. What Nicotero Somewhere. one? What? Well, that we'll, was that we'll, walk. That we'll was a walker there. stalker. So we'll get it to was. that. Yeah. 